What's going on, Universe? Josh here from Polymathics, the YouTube channel that helps you become a modern day Renaissance man. And today I'm excited because finally, after several months, I'm back on the saddle again. And we're continuing our series on the monomyth. Particularly today, we're going to talk about the ultimate boon section of the monomyth. And for those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, go ahead and pause here and check out some of my earlier videos. I talk about what is the monomyth, the history of the monomyth, reference materials for the monomyth, and all the steps and phases and acts that come before this. <coughs> However, for those of you who have been following, let's get right into it. Today, I'm going to break the I'm going to break this down into multiple sections because the boon has a lot of different aspects that we have to look at in, in terms of its importance, the story structure aspect, and all this other stuff. So, so this particular video, we're going to talk about the definition of the boon. What is it in layman's terms? Why is it significant in your story? And kind of what is the history behind it? In other videos, we're going to talk about the psychology of the boon. And we'll talk about the structure, like where does the boon fit into most stories that have, have worked over time. And then one of the other videos we'll do is what are some examples of the boon in famous works from books, movies, etc. So, with that being said, let's just get right into it. What is a boon? Because if you're like me, when you started this whole journey down the rabbit hole into the monomyth and the hero's journey, there were two words for me that I just couldn't grasp. I didn't know. It took me a long time to understand. Uh, first one was apotheosis, which we've already done a video on. And the second one is the ultimate boon. I was like, what the hell is a boon? Essentially... And I'm not going to give you an academic answer because all the academic answers that I've seen are not very good. They're, they're more confusing than anything. Let's just keep it basic so that you understand how it works for your, for your story. In layman's terms, the boon is the thing that the hero goes out to achieve. The, the thing that the hero leaves the normal world for, goes into the special world, goes through all those trials and tests in order to obtain it. That is the boon. So, <clears throat> in, in layman's terms, that's what it is. Now, one of the things that I used to get tripped up on, and I'm sure some of you guys may be confused, is, okay, if that's the boon, then how is a boon different from, a, from the talisman? For example, because a boon can be... A, an elixir, the boon can be a weapon, the boon can be armor, the boon can be a person, the boon can be knowledge, the boon can be a map, etc, etc, etc. So when you see all of those things, you start to ask yourself, well, that sounds a lot like the talisman that the hero receives in the hero's journey. What What is the difference? Let me break it down for you, because I was confused too. The talisman, there are, there are two distinct things. The talisman, there are normally multiple talismans in any given story. And they're given to the hero. They're given to the hero. Normally by an ally or a mentor. Occasionally they'll, they'll win it from a fight. So, for example, when the hero first meets the mentor, the mentor will give the hero some sort of talisman. It could be psychological, like in Star Wars, The Force. When Obi-Wan explains The Force to Luke for the first time, he's changed Luke's psychological perspective on life and opened up a whole new world. That is a talisman of sorts. The other thing that he gives him is a physical tool, which is the lightsaber. And you can see a lot of talismans are... Are things like lightsabers. Is there a special sword, a special shield, <coughs> a special boots, something like that. Sometimes it could be a map. But 
here's the difference. So one, it's given to the hero. And two, it's normally not as powerful as the boon. The boon normally represents either some sort of ultimate power or some sort of ultimate knowledge. Okay, and we'll, we'll, we'll discuss that more in this video and other videos. But, so, so for example, if you look at, sorry, I'm a little sore from my workout today. If you look at The Hobbit, Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit, Bilbo receives, he gets Sting along the way, he gets, uh, gets, Mithril, he, 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 he gets the ring, which is a boon in Lord of the Rings, but in, in th that particular story, it's not the boon. It's just another talisman, okay? The real boon in the story of Lord of the Rings is the Arkenstone. And the reason, here, here's actually the key here, is normally the boon has a symbolic tie with the theme of the story. Normally the boon has a congruency with the theme. That's that's a major, major point to keep in mind. And something to consider when you're making your own stories is when you develop your boon, how does it affect psychologically the audience when they see it in terms of what it represents for the theme? And sticking to the same story just for time's sake, the Arkenstone, just like the 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 One Ring, <clears throat> represents power, greed, and corruption, which is a huge theme that plays part in both The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. And it's something that Tolkien was very adamant about depicting in his stories. And he picked two very poignant very distinct, very recognizable, very resonating boons to show that. And so, you know, when you look at how the Arkenstone affects the dra uh, Smaug, the dragon, how it affects Thorn Oakenshield, and, and all those that it comes from, it's, it, it really drives home the point of the theme. That, that Tolkien was trying to get across. So that is, in a nutshell, what the, the definition of a boon is. It's that thing that the hero goes out from the normal world to obtain and then bring back, this is another key, they, they bring it back to the, from the special world to the normal world. And in the next video, we'll discuss what is the psychology behind that? What is the history behind that? What did Joseph Campbell have to say about that? Okay, so I hope this was helpful. And if you in, enjoyed this, if you like this, if you want to hear more, please give it a like so I know to make more videos like this. And catch me on the next video where we're going to discuss the psychology behind the book. Okay, take it easy.